Welcome, everybody, to the 11th episode of the Hound's Tales podcast. I'm James Hudson, and join with me, as always, is Daniel Evans and Dylan Watson. Uh, we just come off of a off weekend for us, and uh, we're able to kind of kick back and relax a little bit. We, me and uh, me and Daniel, got together uh, and turned our some of the deer dogs loose and uh, my two foxhounds loose. And got so got a little outside exercise going on, and uh, Dylan, I know you had a lot of stuff going on this weekend. Uh, yeah, uh, birthday weekend, and then I also had a few jobs I needed to take care of, so I didn't get to uh, do much with the hounds this weekend. Good, good break weekend for everybody. Yeah, but uh, I know. <laughs> I wish I could call it a full on break. We uh, we ended up having. We built our, our dog house. Uh, me and me and Daniel have a, a kennel put together, and we kennel we kennel our foxhounds together. And we needed to get a bigger house built, so it's actually a funny story. We started building the building the house, and we got to going on it. We got our pallets set out. We got some plastic pallets and set them as the base, and got them all leveled up, and put the back post down, and we measured them out, and put an angle on it, and well. Uh, Long story short, it turns out that 20 degrees of roof angle makes a really steep house. (laughs) (laughs) Very tall. And that is why we are not carpenters. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) We 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 ended up building the the freaking Ponderosa of of dog houses. I swear, this thing is massive. It's an L shape in the one corner. It looks like, I I swear, we could put a shelf in it and, and have it where they could uh, they could be shelved uh, uh, two layers, almost a two-story house for a dog. It's it's uh, it's right entertaining to see. But um, other than that, I, I li- we lime the lots, and I like putting the layered lime down. It keeps the ticks away, keeps them down. Uh, updated everybody on worming, and uh, did our flea preventions for a while. And my uh, my jip came in heat, so I had to kind of separate her from everything, get her away from all the males. So. She's not quite ready for any kind of breeding yet, so it was a it was an off weekend. But like we've said before, no matter no matter what weekend it is, there's always something going on with them things. Oh yeah, uh, it's it's insane. It's <laughs> it really is. Uh, I will before we start. You know tonight's episode, and like I mentioned on the Facebook page earlier, if y'all aren't following us on Facebook, be sure to check us out. Uh, the Hounds Tales podcast. It's on Facebook, so. Um, want to do kind of a quick special anna- announcement. There is a uh, a new ministry out actually, the Fox Chasers for Fox Chasers for Christ ministry. Missy has teamed up, and uh, Big Tim from Pools, uh, he's always down there cooking and always serving a good a good meal. He's they all got together, and a bunch of them got together and have started a Fox Chasers for Christ ministry. It really looks like it's going to be a kind of a cool deal. Uh, their their mission is to spread the word of God by helping fellow fox chasers and families in, in need that uh, are referred to them. So if y'all need any or y'all know anybody in need and uh, we can help them out, uh, we've talked about it as far as the three of us. And we really want to be a part of that. So that's something that the, the Hound's Tale podcast will do what they can to help support and, and be a part of. Uh, so if if you need, if you know anybody in need, or at least even something as simple as just needs a prayer, y'all, y'all find the Facebook page. It is Fox Chasers for Christ Ministry. It's on Facebook. Missy Windsor, you can get in touch with her. Um, and, and, and if there's anything that y'all know that maybe they can help out with, they're just getting started. So any kind of support is, is big for them. And Big Tim put a one heck of a, a sermon on at the three day at Maryland the Maryland state. So it, it really looks like this thing's going to strive. So I hope the best for y'all. And uh, we hope to have her on the, uh, on the show here pretty soon. And she can kind of talk about that and a few other things that she's uh, involved with as far as the Fox hunting worlds goes. So uh, thank you, Missy for doing that and uh, appreciate you letting us be a part of it. So getting into the actual episode ourselves here, we're uh, it's going on judging. And this one, I believe we were talking about it before we kind of started recording. This this one's going to be, I believe, our first uh, touchy subject. What do y'all think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This, this, can, this, 
Go ahead. This this definitely might hurt some feelings, and it it might not. I mean, it's planning on the person and how they think stuff should be done. But we we are reading straight from the master's rule book here, so. Yeah, and we'll even get into it. It flat out says you have to use your best judgment, and and that's one yeah. of the biggest things is you got to understand that that's a judgment call for a lot of this stuff that these these uh, judges are making. Yep, that's right. Um, and uh, even before getting into the rule book side of the stuff, you know, we've talked about it before, just out and out and about. If you've never judged a hunt. Go, go judge a hunt. Get up with your local, whatever pen you're closest to, or even if it's outside, whatever, you can get in there and judge a hunt. If you enjoy the chase and enjoy keeping, helping keep this sport alive, at the same time, go judge a hunt. It is so much fun. I will never, ever, ever forget the first hunt that I, I judged a, I went down with, with uh, Dennis and Steve, actually, and, and got to uh, judge at Java and with Brian Bell, and Brian always puts on a heck of a show. And they, We went in there, and I rode with them, and they gave me kind of a, a brief overview. And it was a one-class uh, puppy hunt, so it wasn't it didn't have a lot of different things to really look for and as far as uh, the two, multiple classes, but – we got in there and it was five hours of just jam packed running. I mean, you did not get a break. And I know y'all got a, y'all got y'all's taste of it last week. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, not last week, but the week before last, uh, Dylan Daniel. Yeah. 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 That was, that was intense for sure. It, and y'all's was half night too. Yeah. It was, uh, half night and half during the, uh, morning hours of the day and it during the nighttime like the early morning still dark out it's we didn't see much going on you could hear them but dude once that uh daylight hit oh man they were going everywhere <laughs> it, 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 it was pretty intense you know i've never i've never i haven't had the chance to judge one in the dark i, I feel like that would just be insane like we pleasure run in the dark and just trying to catch our own dogs and crossing is is hard enough i couldn't imagine trying to get numbers it's 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 hard because i mean you got to catch the game before you can judge a dog i mean a dog can at least that's how i do it if i don't see the game i don't judge the dog i don't scratch it i mean it could be running i didn't see the game i'm not gonna judge it somebody else behind me they see the game they can judge it but it, it's you got to be on your toes and and be as quiet as possible to see and hear the game <laughs> like a like a stealthy uh undercover person or something like that oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you gotta pay a lot of attention to your surroundings to make sure you get that score and daniel i know this was kind of your you know, inside the war, actually being inside with them, that was other than when we ran in Hollywood uh, the other week. That was really, I guess, being inside the pen. That was your first real experience with it, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. So that was, you know, I, I know, I know that's something that you kind of like. How do I say? It was a whole new eye opener, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. That was you know, that was a game changer. Cause that's it, and, and you can kind of tell we're we're not the most we're not the most experienced in in this in this field. Um, we've we've judged a handful of hunts together combined, so it's nothing. We're not going to tell anybody how to judge. That's right. In this episode, that's not that's not what we're here for. We're here to give our opinions, um, and you can see it on our Facebook page that there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, different views and different topics that that are touched on, and and we'll say it again. You know, we we're no experts in this stuff, so 
if the, we say something a little off kilter tonight, y'all help us and we'll help y'all. Don't feel free to, to, to shoot us a message, comment, make a post. Hey, you said this, but this is the way I like to do it. You know, I love, we love hearing different points of views. It's not, it's not our way of the highway. It's like we said at the beginning of the episode, it's, it's a judgment call. And that's actually almost word for word in, in the rule book. And we'll get to that. So kind of diving in a little deeper tonight, we're going to use the, the, the master's rule book and, and go off of that. You know, I think in maybe one of the other, other episodes, we kind of did a quick touch. So we won't spend a whole lot of time exactly on the scoring, I think what we're the, the main focus of the episode is probably going to be the, the principle of judging and what to look for and, and what goes on inside it. So, uh, anyway, getting into kind of the rule book side of it, the hunting side. Well, excuse me, let me, let me back up and restart that. There's four classes there's hunting, trailing, speed and drive, and endurance. Just a quick hit. Hunting hunting's one of my favorite categories to drive. Uh, that was just a spree and drive hunt that y'all did, right? Uh, the other week? Oh, uh, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. I got. I was able to get into one HGA hunt so far. And I tell you what, I almost – and it was down at pool. So, you know, that, that place, when it if it breaks down, you have to start looking for the hunt. And that was one of my favorite parts. So hunting, by definition, in the rule book, work performed by a hound while searching for the scent of approved game during the times when no race is within hearing distance of the judge. This pertains to a hot race on approved game. It does not pertain to uh, a race on uh, unapproved game. Judges must evaluate the hunting hound and try to determine which hounds are actually working. The hardest working hounds shall receive higher scores. A harking or drifting hound should not be given a hunting tour. So the hounds may receive any score from 10 to 30 points in multiples of five, according to the judge's evaluation. And this is a maximum hourly limit. So the way that I interpret this is you got, if the chase is broke down and there's, if there's one hound in there and he is, and I, and I had this in the hunt I, I was in, um, it was one hound by himself in the middle of a cutover. No chase was going. All these dogs were barreling by, a bunch of dogs barreling by me running roads and just kind of looking for that eyesight, uh, just happened to step on one thing. And they had this one hound in there. This dude was working his butt off and i mean he was hunting he was turning over limbs turning over uh leaves looking for everything and he'd strike up on one and he'd hit the trail and he hit that trail bark and he was just that out it, it reminded me of my deer dog so much he was just that slow methodical i'm going to find this joker uh hunting you know it, he never in front of me, he never produced any game, but that dude with nose on the ground, turning over leaves, turning over everything and searching for this scent. And he was all over the place. I enjoyed that just as much as watching these feed and drives crossings. Uh, so at, at that, you know, that dog, he was just by himself. You know, I, I hate, that was my first HGA. So I didn't know, how to evaluate per se on that. But I ended up giving that dog a, a 20 point because he was by himself. I felt like that was fair. He didn't have any other dogs to compete against, but that dude was working his butt off. Um, and I may have been, I may be wrong to, to give him that much, but to me, I felt like he earned it. Uh, you know, what is, and I, the way I'm understanding this and looking at, and y'all tell me if I'm wrong guys, if it's a group of five, whoever looks like he's working the hardest and carrying the group, that whole group is hunting. But if whoever's getting the, the, the whoever's putting in the most work and kind of carrying them guys along, it's he should be getting the 30 points for that hour, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I would say. I, you know, I, I agree. 
That's the way I'm interpreting the rule. Um, so, if if there's anybody out there that's that's got the experience, I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear some more insight on this rule, um, as far as from an experience standpoint. When don't y'all think, guys? Yeah, because that one I can see where that one can get confusing and kind of hard to to judge. Right. right. <clears throat> um. You know, I mentioned the the didn't produce any game. There's a trailing score, and especially in the in the pin world, you don't see a whole lot of trailing uh, scores given because it, a lot of these pins are just so stand up in your face, kind of running. But trailing, by definition, is work performed once the scent has been found and the hound progressively goes forward on the trail, giving tongue. Should the hound stop tonguing and it's obviously searching for a warmer scent? consider this hunting so the trailing scores are given when the hound actually produces game I, i'm i'm trying to find it actually in here where it says that word for word but that's what i've always been taught i mean that is that what y'all have always heard that, that the hound must produce the game to get a trailing score uh, I believe that's what I've heard. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. I look. I overlooked it. In order to receive the maximum score, the hound must produce approved game. So the dog has to produce the game. It actually has to jump. And that's, I've seen a couple hunts where I think two dogs have gotten trailing scores and you're you're pretty much placed after that you're you're pretty much in like i said it's it's a it's a long lost um not necessarily lost but see the the trailing scores you don't you just don't see a whole lot of it's it dylan you kind of mentioned it there it's kind of almost it's really touchy you know unless they they see them it, it's hard to give a trailing score yeah it, it, I can see where trailing can get very confusing as far as between hunting and trailing. Right. Uh, and it just, from what I'm reading, considered as hunting, it, it, it's... You almost, you have to see you the ha- game. Yeah, you produce. have to see the game. And then if you see the game, then there's 30 points to that dog as far as trailing. In a whole other category. Yeah that extra category is huge when it comes down to the HGA. Yeah. So, I mean, it sounds like to me, if you get a trailing score in a hunt, which, which I could be wrong, but nine times out of 10, you're going to probably most likely get that 30 points because a judge seen that dog or watch that dog trail and then jump the game. Yeah. And that's a whole nother. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. So that that's, that's the only way I would see you getting up any points as far as trailing. Right. Because, I mean, a dog can go it. by me, give a mouth every now and then. And then also I can see where that can be confused for babbling. Honestly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if a judge does not see that game and that dog comes by with, let's say it's nose down and it barks out once or twice. Yeah. A yeah, judge can I, I, easily could be confused yeah easily do that for babbling right and that's you know we'll we'll we will definitely circle back um i would consider i would consider the trailing score if you want to refer it to what we talk about on the outside you know just in the deer woods that's the jump yeah to me that's the jump when they jump the when they jump <clears throat> That's when you get your trailing score. So, yeah. Uh, you know, and next in, in, in part of the – in the classes is speed and drive. This is this is the one that everybody chases. You know, hunting – hunting can win you, win you a lot of – win you win your three days and stuff like that. But that speed and drive, that's, that's the one – that's the one to go home and brag about. You know, a lot of your one-day hunts, it's all speed and drive hunts. They do, there's not a there's not a whole lot of uh, HGA one days. 
but your your speed and drive that's 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 it and it's a simple definition when a proved game has been jumped and hounds are running in full cry that, that's the flat out definition of it um first place gets 35 points down to fifth place gets 15 points and just a real quick touch on it uh, there's two different ways in the HGA hunt. Uh, from fifth place on, each pl- each hound receives 15 points until a hound's number is missed or until the judge feels the hound is simply too far behind and deserves a score. Um, then you have your, your GTP uh, scoring, speed and drive. There's two different ways. You do that way that we just said, and then there's another one that goes all the way down to seventh in increments of five. It's the same way with the other. First gets 35, fifth gets 15, and then this other way, six gets 10 and seven gets five. But after that, nothing. No, You only score to seventh position. Most of your hunts, I've only seen a few places still, um, just in, from what I've seen, that use the GTP. And most of the hunts that we go to around here are all HGA scoring style speed and drives so um now that 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 one breaks into a whole different category and this that one's going to really really carry us i believe um into most of the show before i mean what do y'all think before we get into that part or in more in depth there's a, a whole other article. It's judging in the field. And this is the, this is the one that – this is where it's going to get touchy. Yeah. This is where it's going to get – you have to use your judgment. The, the, when you're scoring hounds, literally, Article 9, judging in the field, scoring hounds. The first line, judges must use intelligence, diligence, and discretion – in scoring and scratching hounds. That rule to me is huge. It, okay. It's huge. It's Agreed. so open. I mean, I could go out there and if I see a dog sit down for, for 30 seconds, and that this is not how I am. I'm just kind of using this as an example. If I see a dog sit down for 30 seconds and quit, I can scratch him. But, Dylan, you can see him sit, sit down for five minutes and he gets back up and gets back in a chase and you don't scratch him. Yeah. And, you know, you see one, you know, come by and, and, and you think it's babbling. And next thing you know, he cuts in and gets in on a chase. And then the next person, he would have scratched him. You know, it's, it's such, it's so, there's so many different, opinions and, and different ways about doing it. And I think that's why we talked about it at the beginning that, that this is, this one could be funky. This one could be touchy. I mean, what, what, you know, and it's, it's all a, it's all a judgment call. So I hear a lot of people talk on the, at the, at the hunts and they question like, you know, oh, there's no way my dog got scratched for that, or, or I was I was sitting there watching, and he sat down for 30 seconds, and and he got scratched at that time. It, it happens, but some judges are stricter than others. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> so, and, and and with that. With that rule, I wanted to touch on that one before we got more into the speed and drive. So that was one of the the comments on on our post um, was how hound, how hounds, how the hounds are scored in the categories um, or in the in uh, I'm excuse, I'm sorry how hounds are scored for your speed and drive. Um, me personally, and this is in, in, in that rule right there, you know, this is why I wanted to go over that rule before we, we got into, into this. I, I, if I see, if I can witness a dog cut 
if I see that dog, if I hear a chase coming, if I'm out in the field and I'm, I'm I'm hearing this chase coming to me and I'm waiting and I got my back turned and this dog comes out of nowhere running down the road and comes by me and I watch him cut in on that chase and that dog comes out second place, guess what? He didn't get scored. I mean, that's that dog's that dog did not work for that. To me, right. you don't, you know, that that's you're taken away from the dogs that have been in that chase. You know, and, and you're not going to be a hundred percent correct. There could be, there could have been a dog a hundred yards behind me that cut in and got two hundred yards into the woods and got in on the chase and only ran for thirty seconds. Hey, that's that's the name of the game. Yep. Sometimes you catch them, sometimes you don't. You know, I mean, what 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 is your take on that, uh, Dylan? Well, I mean, and this is coming from a guy that has a dog that cuts like crazy, and I don't know why, <laughs> but that dude cuts, and it drives me nuts. But I mean, from what you say, and which I do agree. I mean, if you sit there and actually watch a dog cut which in a way if you think about it that dog is which that can get com- i see how that can get confusing now that dog is actually harking to a hunt right right so and you got to put that yeah. in consideration also yeah <clears throat> which he might be cutting but he might be also harking and that's a fine line yeah you know? it is it, now, if i could like, like you're saying, if that dog cuts in and he's only runs into the woods, you know, 50 foot, if you can watch that dog get in front of the chase, no, I'm not going to score. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just like all the other uh, – I mean, there's other judges than you in there too. So, I right. mean, right. that dog can cut in, in first or second place or wherever in front of you and you not judge that uh, dog. But the road right behind you and the judge sitting there, he's going to judge that dog first or second place because it did not cut in front of him. So, I mean, it's, you've got, you've got some negative and some, and some pluses in there, but I mean, like, like I said, it's kind of hard to, that's back with the, the trailing and the babbling issue. Like it's, it's a hard, hard mix in there. Yeah. You know, Dana, I'm sure you got your, your taste of that. I mean, what's your, what's your opinion on <clears throat> on uh, how, how when you were judging how did you score the, the dogs coming out it i would definitely look because it, it was some cutters that did not get points and i mean i yeah. could clearly see them just running the roads and then cut right in and right i see, I see where it's a fine line but if i can yeah. physically see that it's you know, more of a cutting instead of, you know, just trying to fall in line. Right. And, and you know, and that kind of reminds me of like a, you said harking, harking to the chase. Yeah. If they, if they are to me, if they are truly harking to the chase, they are, they are going to cut and they're going to get in there and they're going to go to that chase. That's there's right. a there's a there's that like you said like we talked there's a fine line if they're if they're harking to the chase if i can see them and they go way on in there and they pull to the chase and they and they beat everybody out i would highly consider doing it i would definitely probably give that dog points yeah, yeah. you know to technically me. that dog harked to hunt and then right. i mean even though he did cut he's holding the front and i mean now, yeah like it's it's he's holding the front but also is he gonna is he gonna is he gonna hold it is he gonna hold the track right get what i'm saying like he yeah he might cut and he might which which every dog's different like we've discussed before but if that dog is good enough to hark and hold the track and lead the pack yeah then you got then then yeah judge him i mean he's doing what he's supposed to do He's not standing around running roads. Right. <clears throat> but, but if you got go your ahead. dog that if you got your dog that runs down the road and doesn't go into the woods, 
Except maybe a couple feet. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah. No. I 100% agree. If that dog, if there's a pack and you can clearly hear that pack is close and that dog 10 feet into the woods and is like, ah, no, and comes back yeah. out to the road. Yeah. It waits no. on it. It waits yeah. on the chase to get there. Oh, no, no. That would almost, it, that would almost to me, like I could be wrong. Some people might not like that, but I would sit there and I would probably, I would count or time it. How long has that dog stood there waiting on it? Cause yeah. in a way, if you think if that dog stands in one spot and he's not moving, would that be, would, yeah, would that technically yeah. be loafing? Cause he's not I, moving. He's standing in one spot. You know, he would probably screw the crossing up, but I think as long as he got with the chase after it, there's you can't. I don't think you could call that loafing. Yeah, you know, and, but I, I see, I see a hundred percent what you're throwing. You're like it, it, it sucks that you see a, a dog that will I just sometimes a dog will not go into the woods. They'll wait literally at the road and wait for the game to come to them and then get in on the crossing. Yeah. And that makes it hard on judging. It makes it hard, it, you know. It does. You think, oh gosh, the, the judging is not hard. You're just waiting on the, the the game to cross the road, and oh no, not uh, 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 not a chance. Mm-mm. You know, and and one one that I'm funny about. I know, and this the, this one's. I know this one's going to get touchy. There's a fine line of it too. I know some dog wind game and they can run off track a little bit. But oh yeah. If your dog if if five dogs come out on track and another dog is twenty, thirty yards down the road and comes out same pace, same everything crosses just way the heck off track and is almost just running with the pack. He is, he's, he's not getting from me. If he's that far, he's not getting a score, a few, a few yards, you know, maybe 10, 15 yard yards. But after he gets past a certain point and you can tell he's, he's, he's just, he's just trying to pull to him. He's just trying to catch back up and he's almost, you, you almost catch him cutting in the middle of the road to try to catch back up. Yeah. Now some judges, I'm, 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 I don't know who I'm just saying that could be another babbling. I mean, if that dog is that far off a of track and it goes by a judge, a certain judge who sees that he, he might put it down as babbling. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I mean that. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. That track and a pack goes by and this dog's 20, 30 yards down and kind of flanking the pack. Like how, how, how would you go about judging? Right, that dog. I mean, right, <laughs> I know. I, I just don't score him. You know, if he's not to me, you know, and kind of on the ba- on the babbling, like you said, to me, in, in my opinion, if he's not, <clears throat> if he's not, um, if he's not pulling dogs to him, that's right. Then it's it's really not, and we'll get into that rule here in a little bit, but you know. But the scoring, the speed and drive is not hard. You know, I kind of thought, I mean, no, I'm sorry. It is hard. It's not easy. Yeah. It's right. there's a lot of judgment calls you got to make out there. Um, and I mean, that, that, that all comes back to the number one thing that you said earlier. Judging, judges must use intelligence, diligence, and discretion. Oh, damn. Yeah, this Alabama boy can't read. <laughs> discretion and discretion <laughs> and scoring and scratching hounds. Yeah. So, you know, it's it, there's there's a lot of uh, definitely a lot of a lot of things and and here's another thing and it's <clears throat> you would be surprised to get that pat coming. I I record my voice. I record it as I'm going. Yeah, you know, I, I and I go back and I listen to it. There's no way that I can remember 
10, 10 dogs coming across and crossing now. Oh yeah. And I mean, the way me and Daniel done it was like, I was kind of out in the cutover. I wasn't what probably say 50 yards from you, Daniel, maybe. Yeah, and I mean, of course I would have my, my book in my hand, but I'd holler them out as a game run by me and the dogs run by me. I would holler out numbers and Daniel would have his, his phone recording to where he could hear me. That way we'd go back over it. It's like, all right. Cause I mean, I yell out 10 numbers. I don't forgot the first one. <laughs> That's right. So, <laughs> That's I mean, right. he, he's also second ear set of ears. And then also yep. he's got the recorder. So we know exactly which one I said first, second, third on to, on the 10th. And here, here's another thing. Once, once you miss a hound, the, depending on your location, like you're in the middle of cutover, so you could see a lot of it. You could see what game was kind of pulling and, and coming from different directions. But there's a lot of times when you're out there judging and the hounds just – by the fourth or fifth dog that you're trying to get, it's five of them in a, under a blanket right there. Oh, yeah. And you can't see a dog's number if you're right. – if you're like on the ground, which me, I, I was standing on top of a stump. So, I mean, I got kind of an aerial view, but if you're standing on the ground looking at a pack and a two dogs run out side by side, well, guess what? The one close to you, that's the one that you. Yeah, that's the one you're going to see. You see the number. The other one you yeah. don't. And then they're in the woods. I mean, yeah. it's just like a split second and them dogs are gone. Yeah, you got to be quick. But So, I mean, if you, that if could you be miss. first and second and then you miss the third dog that come out right beside the second place one. You can't judge anymore. Yeah, you're done. You, you do not – if you miss a hound, you do not judge. You do not score anything after that. That – because you're, you're – if the, the hound that you missed coming out fourth, you do not give the fifth-place dog the, the scoring after that. You, That's right. Because you're, you'd be cheating the dog that you missed. And That's it right. happens. I did not think that it would be that hard going out there. You know, I'm used to, I was used to the deer woods and I can go out there with the deer dogs. And I'm like, all right, well, which, uh, 10 minutes after the chase was over, or they crossed them. I'm like, yeah, the deer crossed and Vader was first, Sith was second, Red was third, Whiskey was fourth and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, but this you're talking, I'm talking six dogs compared to, 300 dogs that's right and i mean <laughs> not, all, not all 300 in one chase but it's the, it, there could be 40 coming to that one chase oh yeah i mean like i told you the other day when we and daniel was over there at that hunt it was not i mean it was running but you could not really actually hear a bark it was just a constant roar it was almost <laughs> like you was at a uh like the Roanoke Civic Center, and there was monster trucks in there, and there was just a constant <laughs> roar. Like a there was no er, er, it was just a roar. And I mean, dude, when a pack of hounds like that come by you, it's it's unreal, and it's hard <laughs> to judge because you got anywhere from ten to fifty to a hundred dogs on that one track, and I mean, you got to be on top of your game, paying attention to what you're doing. Uh huh. Yeah, I, I remember the first time I went, I was like, oh, psh, I'm going to get like 15, 20 cross and let's get this. I think I got six. <laughs> I got six. I got six legit crossings, and that was the most I could do, a four-hour hunt, and I could get – I got six crossings. I was, I was odd because in the game, smart. They don't cross, and I don't know if they did this with y'all, but I know most every time I go – the game once once you once they cross once or twice in front of you there, they're not coming back in that spot. They're gonna they're gonna move down down the road. Oh yeah, it's I think what what Daniel we got five crossings out of a four hour hunt. Oh uh, yeah, five legitimate five. crossings. Yeah, yep. the where we seen game. Now I seen yep. a lot of game in that cutover. I mean, I had game run right up to me and stop and look at me and turn and run the other way. <laughs> but there were no hounds on it. <laughs> right. D Dylan, you must be outside smoking a cigarette. Why well, you hear a whip wheel? I hear a whip wheel. I love it. I love yep. it. Yep. Got it in the background for you. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, but, but going on, you know, that it's you hear a lot of people, and I, I hate, and, and I think that's one of the biggest things that bother me is you hear a lot of people that complain, like, um, and I'll just use this as an example. You know, anybody that's in the world right now, the the scoring for your speed drive hunts at, at, at pools have have been low numbers. You know, we hear you hear us on the on the podcast talk about the numbers and the, what it takes to win. And some of these puppy hunts are uh, eighteen hundred points to win and uh, twelve hundred points to win, two thousand points to win. Then you get to pools and it's a four hour hunt. It takes one hundred eighty points to win. And you're like, what the crap, man? Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to look at it this way too. It's 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 the game. I mean, yeah. fox are fox will get in a hole real quick. Yeah. A coyote. I mean, a lot of your North Carolina, a lot of your southern states, other than Virginia, runs coyotes. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. a, a coyote is going to only move throughout the four right. four hours. So I mean. That's yeah, two totally different styles of running. Oh, and yeah, also, for sure. And one of the things that, that really that really sucks, and, you know, we talk about if you haven't judged before, get in there, get in there to your local pens. And this is one thing that we got to get a little bit better about our own selves uh, is, is getting in there and judging, <clears throat> you know. And I know from, a, from a, being a hound owner, it, it's hard to make that sacrifice – of, okay, I could be going to a hunt this weekend. I could be running my dogs. I've worked hard. Why am I going to take a weekend off of doing this when I could be running my dogs to judge? Oh, and yeah. It's a hard call. But I, I know the feeling. <laughs> here, here's my view on it. If you, if you, if you don't want to get in there and judge, then don't complain about the scoring. If you're not going to get in there and do it, don't, don't complain. You have no, and that's just the way I feel. Don't, that's right. Don't, <laughs> do not complain about it. You have no right. No right. Until you've gone in there and done it, and like I said, we're not experts by any means, and we don't have a lot of room to talk, but until you've gone in there and judged at least one hunt, don't talk to me about the scoring. That's right. And I mean, that the, honestly, the only way you're going to get, which I see, is my opinion, an honest, 100% true scoring, as if you got hundreds of judges in there and you got them spread out 10 feet apart. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, right. I <laughs> right. mean, because there's game and dogs going everywhere. Exactly. A little bit, but yes, 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 I agree. You know, and that's the thing. That's what I was going to – that's what I was talking about. I said a lot of these – hold this 800 and something acres. And yeah. Just that these hunts have. Oh, I sh- he has one every weekend. Yeah, every weekend, and there's usually 20 judges there. You know, that 800 acres, 20 judges, that is not easy. There's a lot of known crossing, and Demo and them do a really good job of setting you up in there and get you close to the crossings. But like I was touching on, you don't that, that crossing does not happen every time. Oh, no. You can move. And You've I mean, that's, that's, that's back to what you were saying earlier about – getting in there, getting in there and judging. I mean, a lot of people that are into this, they really, which I'm just, I'm just speaking out there. This could be wrong, but they don't want to judge. They was, they would much rather run than judge it, which I feel I have just as much fun judging than I do running the hunt. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no stress on your job. I mean, you got the stress of wanting to do a good job, and, and you, you know you're going to be busy the whole time. But yeah, because you you go in there with the mindset, hey, I'm going in here and I'm going to get some scores. Right. Well, you better have some running shoes on. That's all I got. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I when I judged that hunt at Java, it was like August. It was hot. It was like 80 degrees by nine o'clock. My shirt, I had a gray shirt on. It was soaking wet by the end of that hunt. <laughs> I mean, it was a whole different color. It was a whole different shade. And it was, oh my God, I did not think I was going to work that hard. Oh, yeah. You know, I had one road to cover 
and I was running from in. And these dogs down here in this chase, they were coming. I was getting down there. I was trying to get this thing. And I get down there, and crap, I missed the first dog. I, it blew that whole crossing. I had that happen twice. I run down to the end of the road. The first dog had already crossed. That crossing is done. Just exit off. Nope. Can't judge it no more. Yep. <clears throat> All the way back to the other end, trying to get the other chase coming in from the other direction. And the same dag on thing happened. I missed the first dog. And yeah. God, it was aggravating. Jeez. <laughs> Keeps your blood pumping now. Good God, it does. Um, you know, do you, what, I mean, do y'all have anything else to kind of throw in on, on that? I, I mean, uh, as far as just the judging the speed and drive side of it. Uh, no, I mean, we could probably talk for that for the next five hours, honestly, yeah. and still not cover everything. Right. You know, so, I mean, um, I'll kind of dig into some of the more of these, the scoring of the hound rules, actually by the rules. Um, let's see, you know, this one really involves a lot of your outside, uh, outside ones is hounds running deer are not to be scratched, but they cannot be scored either. This is a, this is a fox hound. And, you know, it happens. Uh, on oh, the outside, yeah. you know, deer get spooked up sometimes. It's not what's supposed to be going on, but yeah, and and, and most of your hounds that run fox also run, run deer. deer, right? <laughs> so that you don't score deer on the outside with it's running that, and judges are supposed to try to break up the deer race. If it happens, your job as a judge is to break that up, break it up. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, derby and all age dogs may be scored together. I mean, run together, but scored separate. What that means is, and this one, <laughs> this one, a, a buddy of ours kind of got, got the shaft on this one. I believe if so, say, say two derby dogs come out in front of an all age hound, your first place derby dog gets 35 points, your second place dog gets 30 points that all age dog he's running in his own category he's yep. first in his category he gets 35 points he may have been third in the chase in the line but he was first in that category that's right points also a run a dog running by him by himself he um is it 20 or 25 points i think it's 20 <laughs> 20 yeah, points. I think it's 20. Ain't that right, Daniel? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that dog does, has no competition. So <laughs> he can't, he, you can't judge his speed. That's a 20 points. Yep. You know, and that's just a kind of a quick t- touch on that. Um, let's see. And then here's now, the one we were just talking about. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Now, does that count like you were just saying? The two derby dogs come out and then the all age come out. Now, ah, that you're, you know, you're right. You're right. Uh, you, you're absolutely correct to me on that. That is, that is correct. That dog has to have game in his category to be scored for 35 points. So, what that example I gave earlier was wrong. It, that dog, that all age dog, would have scored 20 points. Yep. Now, if there was another all age dog in there, then yes, he gets thirty five, and then the next one gets thirty. But yeah, that's that's correct. I, I forgot about that. that. I'm glad you corrected me on that. Um, and here, number six in, in the book: if during a crossing the judge fails to read the number of the first hound, he must disregard that crossing and rise to score of the hounds on the next crossing. If you miss it and here and right along with it, if during a crossing the judge fails to read the number of a hound, he must stop with the last hound he scores successfully. So there, it's not no, it ain't no, uh, it ain't no skipping around. Once if you miss it, you, you miss it. You stop. Yep. You know, and I, I, I feel like that's a that that's that's a huge one. I see one right here that I feel like is a huge one. And in a way I kind of disagree with, okay. with this one. It's, it's, 
number eight, and it's in the rule book, and it says every hound mouthing tracks other than fox, coyote, bobcat, or deer shall be recommended for elimination. Judge must mm. n- must note time and fault. All right. My issue with that is if that dog is running game, it doesn't matter what kind of game, that dog's running game. I understand. It, I feel like it should be the same thing with the deer rule, try and break it up. But I, I do not agree with the recommended for elimination part. Yeah. And I, I, I'll, I think in the pen world, you don't see that because 90% of the time, well, almost all the time, there's no other game but what you're supposed to be running in. Yeah. So, but now, yeah. Out, outside, you have you have no control over that. Right. I mean, a dog's going to run game, especially if it's sight chasing it. It's it's going to run it. Yeah. And I, I don't, and I may be wrong in this, but I think that's probably one of those rules that probably – you lean more on the on the rule of breaking it up, and as long as they break it up, you know. I, I wonder how many people. I've never judged an outside hunt, yeah. So I wonder how. I'm, I'm curious. I'd like that. I'd like to know how many people would eliminate one like that. Yeah. Um, kind of moving along with it. Uh, let's see, number nine. That's really the next one in that little section, and. You, you have to write your score down um, at the, the time of your score. I know some of the rule books, and, and again, this whole rule book could be a whole another two-hour long episode. But uh, some some hunts and some scores, you're not allowed to score the same the hound within a certain amount of time. I believe yeah. is how it reads. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Here's the fun one. And you thought we were getting touchy before. Scratching. Scratching a hound. (laughs) This is the hated one for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We kind of touched base on some of the ones that you don't see very often or in our less um, less known. Um. One of the ones I haven't seen yet, and, I, and I, th- this one, this one, this one, I've heard different opinions on it. You don't ever see it because of how touchy it is. Running a covered track. Running a covered track is, say, a group of 10 hounds come out on a chase, okay? And those dogs are running it. And there's this one dog that's behind and he's 50 or 60 yards behind, but he comes out on the same track. You could scratch that dog for running a covered track or Uh, running dog tracks. That that's that rule. That's, that's, that's very tricky. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not huge on that rule. I feel like it's a, I, I, I know dogs, some dogs will. And, and I had, I had a, a deer dog that started out like that. He, he would rather run the, 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 his brother than run a deer. He just, that's just how he thought it was supposed to happen. He hadn't got in there and, and was able to get in up in front enough to really know that, Hey, I'm actually supposed to run in this, not my brother. Now, now in this, in the handbook or rule book here, mm-hmm. After it says uh, babbling, running covered tracks, running back tracks, or running yeah. dog tracks, the hound must be recommended for elimination by at least two different judges. Correct. So, so that 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 kind of helps it a little bit. Right. But I mean, right. if that dog stays true to that track and that two judges see it, then right. But how can you fault that dog if? I mean, obviously, obviously, if you see the game and it stays on the same right. track that that game is on, how are you going to scratch it? Uh, yeah, that that yep. that one can be touchy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some other ones, some other scratches that you don't see a lot. 
running rabbits. Um, not really a, uh, you know, that's not something really coming to a whole lot. Uh, howling and uh, bailing, baying at the judge. Uh, I got a dog that I always worry about that because when I walk into the freaking lot, she likes to bay at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that one, that one always concerns me a little bit whenever I take her, but she's been pretty good about it so far. Um, let's see. Um, another one, you don't, they don't, I've never seen them actually write it down as this, but it's more along the lines of loafing, uh, returning the cast. Um, but, that the same dog I just talked about, she did it last, last hunt. And she, when she got done, when she was done, she knew where she got turned out loose and she come back. It, it happens. Um, but a lot of people just write that down as loafing, um, from what I've always seen. But now I, I, let's get into some of the, we'll, we'll leave loafing for the last. We'll start with uh, we'll start with babbling. I oh, so you're going back. back up top, back to number two. Yeah, number two. Babbling, by the definition, uh, in the rule book, is a fault for which hounds should be scratched. Babbling is defined as giving false tongue to the extent of ear- interfering with the chase. In case of a hound babbling to the, ex- uh, I'm sorry. Let's see. Hang on. In case of a hound babbling to the ex- extent of interfering with hounds or the chase and seen by two or more judges who agree that such is the case, this hound can be ordered tied up or crated by the judges or put back in the holding pen. Um, hounds will be allowed five minutes after the cast on the first day, three minutes after the cast on the second day, and two minutes after the cast on the third or fourth day before any hound may be reported by the judges for babbling. There's a lot of dogs coming out the gate get excited i mean they're all sitting at the sit, bouncing if you never experienced it the roar coming from the holding pins when they oh, get yeah. to get turned loose is insane so yes. they, they give that little bit of time for forgiveness um let's see any hound shall not be considered as babbling should be should he be running as much as 30 yards downwind from a track but there you go there's your answer to what we talked about earlier yeah yeah, there it is. Um, should he continue to give tongue a few times or on a run or over? Should or should he give one or two eager mouths at a bad fence when harking to running hounds? So there, there's our answer for that. Uh, let's see. Except that if a hound should remain at a fence and continue to give tongue then he may be scratched. Hounds babbling at a stream or drifting and babbling may, or drifting and babbling may also be scratched. So I have not scratched a dog for babbling yet. I have not come into that situation yet, Uh, but I have been on the outskirts watching hunts go on and seeing hounds running down the highway, not highway, but the, the road in the pen and they're, they're just barking. Yeah. That's babbling. That's babbling. You know, and, and sometimes, and, and I've, I have seen, I've had one case where I was close and I just knew this dog was babbling. I mean, I had it wrote down on the daggone book that I was carrying that this dog was babbling in about time. I'm getting ready to seal his fate. That joker cuts in on a track. And I, and I missed it. I just missed, I missed the game. So I scratched it off. I, I you know, not the dog, but I scratched the, the mark down and yeah. I let him stay in. I didn't scratch him, you know, and I feel like that that's happened before. Um, there's been stories that I've heard that, uh, uh, two chases come into one judge and the judge catches the one chase and, turns around to try to catch the other one, misses the game, and catches the dog running full cry, thinks it's babbling, gets scratched. Yep. It's nasty, but I've, I've heard of it. It happens. So that that one's touchy. Um, did y'all have any kind of 
cases in the in, in y'all's hunt that that you you may have thought one was. Uh, I did. Yeah. But at the same time, the dog was kind of. It was in some thick grass, and he was just kind of running in a circle a couple times, and just giving mouth the whole time. Granted, it was huh. dark. It was it was still real dark. I never did see nothing. He was by himself, but I couldn't tell exactly what he was doing. Right. So you know, I didn't. I didn't feel it was right to do it at that time. Yeah. But I it, agree with that. It definitely, it definitely seemed like he, you know, yeah. it seemed like he was babbling. I agree. I, I think, you, to me, I, I, I guess we, I guess we would probably consider lenient judges. If I, if I don't, if if it's without a shadow of a doubt that he's babbling, if that dude has come by me four or five times, just barking going out of road, yeah, guess what? He's getting scratched. Or if he's just, I don't know, if he's doing something crazy enough. And and that goes, and it's actually, I'd have to search for it, but a dog running the wrong game, a running rabbit, you know, rabbits can get in any freaking way. Or if a rabbit breaks into a pen and, and that dog's running a rabbit, that dog's actually considered babbling. And that dog should be scratched for it. Unfortunately. <laughs> Leave Sorry, Dylan. <laughs> Leave Patsy at home. Um, you know, I, I, we don't know. That 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 one. That, that one's that, that one's touchy, and I just we just don't know a whole lot about that one. Yeah. Now, the one that is the most scratched for out there. I, I did. We did forget. I think we did forget to mention fail, failure to hark. Uh, we'll touch on that one real quick. It, it, hark, um, failure to hark is if if that dog is if the runner had broke down and that dog is searching for a hunt and a chase breaks up within ear distance or breaks out within within ear distance and that dog does not pull to it. Um, it is it, it, it can be considered failure to hark. Which I, uh, I I don't I haven't seen a whole lot of those scratches being on. Yeah, most of it is 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 loafing and babbling. Loafing. Yep, and then we'll we'll tackle the loafing. Uh, this one this one's like we talked about earlier in the beginning of the show. That this one's the this one's the touchy one. Um, there's a lot of different opinions on it. The the, the quick. The, the quick gist of loafing, a hound that shows no inclination to hunt may be scratched for loafing. That is the quick gist of it. Yep. I mean. Which, that, <laughs> see, they don't, they don't give an exact if a dog just stands right. in one spot. Now, yep. with my opinion, as far as loafing, if that dog stands there and is looking toward a chase that is going on for X amount of time, whichever, see that there, there's different ways people look at the loafing mm -hmm. scratch here. Cause I've heard people say, Oh, I'll give that dog five minutes. And if it's still standing in the same spot, I'll scratch it for loafing or I'll give that dog, three minutes or two or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I don't see I, how you can scratch a dog for standing there. He's still on his feet. Now, if a dog goes and lays down, oh yeah, 100% loafing. Cause I mean, the dog laid down yeah. and there's hunts going on. Yeah. To, to me, like you're talking, like if, if they, the dog's still standing, but if he's not pulling to it, it's almost more of a failure to hark than it is a loafing. Yeah, exactly. Like if you're going to scratch for anything, scratching for a failure to hark. So I, I feel like they should put in this book like a certain amount of time of that dog standing in one spot. 
it should not be classified as loafing. It should be classified as failure, failure to hark. Yeah. And I know one of the things is, and uh, Peyton Lucy, he, he mentioned it. Uh, a judge should try to cast a, a recast a dog before they scratch it for loafing. And I agree. And I think oh, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find it in here. I think that's what you're supposed to do. If anything, it's a, it's a courtesy. Get, try to get that dog back in the woods, get him away, you know? And, and like you, you know, you were touching on it to me, it depends on the running. Yeah. If, if, if I mean, you're if at a pitch down and there is absolutely nothing going on, which you have dogs in pens that, that don't really have a whole lot of hunt because their whole yeah. life they ran in a pen. So they're right. so in their head. They're thinking, Hey, I'm in here. I'm supposed to be running. I, I'm not mm-hmm. hunting already here. I just got to run. And they're used to something eventually just coming in their path. Exactly. Now, when that comes in and the, the pen isn't running, you're going to have dogs that are just like, you know what? Nothing's going on. I'm going to quit. Them. Yeah. I mean, they're just. And but I mean, at, the, at that point, if they're laying down. That's loafing. That's loafing. You know, they're done. They're done. You cannot, I mean, I would. Me, me personally, I would much rather see my dog run the road than lay down. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. Even though the running the road drives me nuts, yes. I'd much rather see him run the road than lay down. Yeah, and you know, you know, you talk about the, the 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 type of running going on. Like you said, if there's not a whole lot going on, I I give a lot more forgiveness for for Logan. Oh yeah. 100%. You know, a dog, a dog's natural instinct. You got, you got a lot of dogs and I'm not going to say that natural instinct. You got a lot of dogs that when the running is broke down, they're, they're going to look for people. You oh, know, yeah. they're like, okay, it's time to go home. Like I'm done. There's nothing in here. Like dad, mom, come get me. I'm, I'm done with this place. <laughs> Let's go. <Yeah. laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's a common that's that's where the common courtesy thing comes in. I mean and the, judge the judge stands in one yeah. spot. He has seen game. Guarantee that he has seen game within the past I'm gonna say fifteen minutes max. Yeah. yeah. If that dog's loafing and there's absolutely nothing going on, try and get something started. Like put that dog like hark him in there a little ways. Let him try and get in there and get that game that last game that you've seen i mean it's not only will it not only is it helping the pen owner because i'm sorry as a hunter and the pen breaks down within two hours you get aggravated yeah and then it i mean it it, it does happen i'm not gonna down nobody for that but if a judge was in there and nothing's going on common courtesy to the pen owner and the dog hunters Get something started. Hark a dog right. in the woods. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. Yeah, and I, I think you know. And now, if if the pen is just absolutely standing on its feet and flat out jamming, and this dog comes over to me and looks at me, he, you know, and stands there for a few minutes. Guess what? He's he's either getting loafing or or failure to hark. He's getting one yeah. of them. You know. And it, it, it happens. A dog, some dogs will tire out. They'll get, they'll get tired and they're just like, all right, I'm done. I, I've had enough. I've tried. I've given you everything I got. Oh Let's, yeah. I mean, no. that's just like the hunt we all three went to. Well, I don't, I don't know if Daniel, yeah, Daniel was, I think it was just me and Daniel. Uh, a guy turned loose, a uh, black lab. <laughs> okay, yeah, that wasn't there for that. <laughs> a black lab and a fox fan, and let me tell you, that black lab might have been a little slow, but it didn't give up, and it was in there, and it was it was doing its thing. It surprised <laughs> me. I was like, "Look at this joker here." That's what I'm talking about. So I mean, oh, that was a crowd filler. <laughs> oh yeah, that that made me think. All right, you can you can throw any dog in this darn thing right here as long as you work with it. It ain't right. got to be a, a walker or a foxhound. It, as long as you work with it, you can do whatever you want. So, I mean, right. 
yeah, lo- loafing uh, is definitely one touchy. You you hate you hate seeing your dog come back after five hours. I, I, I'll give you an example. My my dog in the three day hunt, fifteen hours of being in the pen, and thirty minutes left in the hunt, he got scratched. Thirty minutes. Oh yeah. Fourteen and a half hours, he was up on his feet, moving around, staying staying active, and he stopped for, who knows? I I, I don't know. He stopped. He stopped in the wrong place. Stopped in front of a judge. Yep. And I mean, and- he, he got popped, and that 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 sucked. That hurt. Oh yeah. Because you don't get to third day. Yeah, and you don't get to see you don't get to see your score either. Like when when I got him back, that dude was done. He was tired. Yeah. He was like, Dad, what in the heck are we doing? This was crazy. <laughs> you know, and, and I hate that I didn't get to see what what he scored, but it, it's just the name of the game. Um, that that hurts. And even in a one day, you know your dog can get in there and do it, and if he gets scratched, it, it hurts. And you know, I always hear people joke, and I think it would probably cause more fights than it would anything. I always hear people say, "Well, I wish they uh, write down the name of the judge that that scratched scratched my dog." Do you really want that to happen? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got some people that get little little feisty, and and they get the get them in there, and like, "Hey, why did you scratch my dog?" And they give you some kind of reason, and you don't like it. Who knows what's coming? But oh yeah. That's that's all jokes aside, you know. That's that's just joking around, but yeah. Any, now, anytime you get scratched and it, it sucks, you, it, it 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 sucks. And it, it, I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, you get mad. You're like, you, you know, that dog doing what it's supposed to, but at one point in time, he needed a break. Yeah, I mean, a three days a whole lot. I mean, a five hour hunt can be a okay. lot for a dog that's not ready for a five-hour hunt. Yeah. The first time yeah. we done ours, that fifth hour, our dogs, when we picked them up, their legs were shaking. They were stretched. And, I mean, because they jammed the whole five hours. And, I mean, I was looking at Paul's thinking, oh, oh God, we done blew these dogs up. But thank goodness we didn't. Yeah, they, were they fine, didn't. But they, they were hurting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. But – Daniel, do you have anything to kind of to tag on to any of this? I, I think we've pretty well um, covered most of this. You know, this is this yeah. episode. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, y'all have touched on on everything as far as I know. Yeah. Here, here we go. I, I actually found that 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 rule. It's under the home plate judge. Home plate is back at the gate. Uh, where everybody comes in. Uh, first part of that, let's see. May score, they, they may score hounds in the field, the same as the judge. Crossings happen right at the gate. They do. Second rule, shall make every effort to recast a hound that has returned to the casting grounds. And should encourage that hound to continue hunting by calling the hound away from the casting grounds. Upon giving the hound ample opportunity to recast, at which time the home plate judge is firmly convinced that it will not continue, he may eliminate it and return it back to the casting crowns. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Hmm. So there it is. You, you have to make an effort. Um, and and that's another judgment call. I, I've seen some home plate judges – walk a dog over to the to the edge of the woods and if the dog doesn't make any effort he's done he's 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 going to scratch him and that's just it it's, it's over um and to me that's that's not enough especially on on a on a hunt that the, the hunt running's broke down yeah you know um excuse me that that's that, that that needs to be done now i've watched other ones they pull them over there they they hark them uh you know they call them over there they get them walk them 100 yards down the road and that dog will take back off a lot of times it will 
but sometimes the dog's just done. It just coming back to the gate. It knows where to come back and, and it's done. But that, that, that there's the rule. Always give the effort if you're judging, but guys, if you haven't judged, get in there and judge. These pens need it. They, they really do. And most of the time, um, we talked to, we talked to, um, Hollywood and <clears throat> told them that we would judge the two day they got coming up in, uh, August. Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, thank you. I mean, that was the first words that come out of his mouth. He was like, thank you. He's like, we have so many people that want to run in it. that don't want to judge it. And he was like, it's so hard to find the judges for the two days for the Derby hunt. And I was like, we're here. Hello, coming in, coming in hot. Let's do it. Yep. So th- most of your pen owners, especially for these one day stuff, you know, like um, your three days, I think you have to be invited or most of the time they want you, they, they will invite you. And the more you judge, the more you build a reputation up and the, the better, the more chance you'll get to judge. I'd love to judge a couple three days at some big pens. You know, that sounds, I'd, I'd really love to do that. Oh yeah. But it, if you get a chance, get in there and judge. Uh, to me, I, I, we've, I've always, I've heard a lot of talk about this rule. Um, I don't know if it's even a chance that it's going to come into play, but I think it should. I think to run any, any three day, you ought to have to, to, to judge one. Or at least judge one days. Or at least judge a, a one or two one days, yeah. Yeah. I think to, to run in the hunts, you ought to have to judge one. For every three hunts. I feel like for every three hunts, you should at least judge one. Get what I'm saying? Some, like, yeah, something like that, yeah. You know, I'd love to see that be – you know, I don't know that there would be any way to enforce it, and you'd probably end up actually killing the dang, dang on sport, but – yeah. Just because just people are not going to put the effort in. But, guys, if y'all listening, go out there and judge. It's it's so much fun. It's Not only does it help the hunt go on and it makes you get better scores, the more people that are in there, but, Jesus, it's fun. It is fun. <laughs> it, so, get in there and do it. Um I hope y'all enjoyed this, guys. We did, I, I slacked. Um, I had a lot going on this week. Uh, we've all been busy. This has been a uh, this is a hectic time. It always seems like right around this time, right in the May June, April May June uh, area, where there's always a lot going on. And we just had we had a lot going on. I didn't get to write down the the scores from this past weekend, so I'll get it wrote down. We'll we'll double up on it next week, like I did last week. Um, I hope y'all have enjoyed this uh, episode. We've we've lost a little steam in the view, so y'all y'all please share away. Uh, the, the more y'all share, the more uh, encouragement it gives to us. It, it, uh, if their numbers go down, it makes it, it definitely discourages us a little bit. So y'all please feel free to share away. And if there's any advice that we can we can take to to make the show better, y'all y'all give it. Y'all y'all send it to us. We'll. Uh, We'll definitely take heed to it. And again, your 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 suggestions are not uh, forgotten. Daniel has been doing hella research on some <laughs> uh, remedies and and, and vitamins and um, uh, flea and tick stuff. And he's got. I swear you had ten pounds of paper that you had printed off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's definitely going to be more than one episode on it. Let's yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. And we we've been talking we're going to try to get a vet on here and and uh, on the show or and and we're thinking um one maybe one of the vets down at Corbin's and get him on the get him on the show and and he can really help us get the A's and A's and stuff like that so. That's Again right. guys, we we appreciate y'all listening. Y'all share away. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. We're going to keep doing this as much as we can. We enjoy it. There's a lot of positive feedback coming from this. And uh, guys, do y'all have anything else? No, no, that's it. Sounds good. Good deal. So again, 
thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Everybody that's hunting this weekend, good luck. We're all, we're having another off weekend this weekend. Uh, we've got a little pleasure running in this weekend, so hopefully maybe we can get some audio clips together and, and, and put it on the show. So other than that, good luck, everybody, this weekend. And everybody, happy hunting.